service here at Inchurch Melbourne. We're so glad that you joined us today. You know, whether you um, are a regular part of Inchurch Melbourne, we want to say welcome. Or if you're new or just been scrolling through and found us, we just want to say welcome. We're so glad that you're here to worship uh, God with us this morning. You know, I just want to encourage everyone with a verse from Colossians 3.2 that says, set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. You know, when, if you are in Christ, you don't have to look at things the same way you did. You can actually shift your perspective and see things from God's point of view. You know, I think that's so freeing. No matter what circumstances, no matter how big or confronting or hard it may be, God has a different perspective from you. Us in our um, old way of thinking often can respond to things uh, and don't see the big picture. But God sees the big picture and he has a way through it. Um, so I want to encourage you, if you're in Christ this morning, Look at your situation from God's point of view. Ask Him to show you and show, show you how He's moving in your life. You know, when you understand and recognize Jesus in those situations, your response changes because you realize it's not as hard as you think it is because God's uh, there right by your side. So I'm just going to pray for us and then we'll get on with the service. Let's pray. God, I thank you that you're with us uh, in everything. God, I thank you that you have a perspective uh, that's different from ours. And actually, um, when we realize that there's freedom that comes when we see things from your point of view and not our own, God, I just ask God that you would help us to focus on the things of you more than we focus on our circumstances, that we focus on who you are and uh, what you have for our lives rather than looking at um, things that are less, less than God. I thank you that you're with us and I just pray your anointing over this service today. We are open our ears and are ready to hear from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we're going to worship right now. So why don't you stand wherever you are and let's praise him. Yes, yes, yes. 
Good morning, everyone. Today is Vision Sunday, and I want to share with you why we think as a church that this is a really important day for us. You know, in Habakkuk 2.2, it says, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. Now, kids, you may be wondering, what is a herald and what is the revelation and why we're writing it down on tablets? Well, I want to remind you of a, a story in the Bible that you guys would probably all know about Moses. Now, God gave a vision to Moses and he said to Moses, I want you to write it down on tablets. So these were old fashioned ways of writing down like we write down on paper now. But the whole point was so that all of the Israelites could see exactly what God had spoken. They didn't have to try and remember it. They could see it. If they forgot it, they could look back at it again. So they actually wrote it down so that they would remember. Habakkuk 2.2 write down the revelation and make it plain so the herald may run. So what's with the herald? Well, the herald would go forward and share the good news and share the important messages with the townspeople. No Facebook, no internet, no phones. A herald would go, here are the new laws. Here's a celebration coming. There's an important person. So why do we do Vision Sunday? So we can make it plain so everybody knows. So in Kids Church, we talk about vision and what the year ahead is going to look like. Pastor Craig in church talks about vision and what the year ahead is going to look like. So if you're wondering why we do Vision Sunday, that's why. So we all are on the same page and we can all run with the vision God has given in Church Melbourne and in Church Kids. So I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye. Thanks, Pastor Chris, for that. Right now, we've got some announcements. We are having a water baptism service next Sunday after church on the 21st of February. You know, if you're interested in being water baptized at that service, today's your last day to fill out an expression of interest form online. We're also excited to announce today, Imaginations Conference, our missions conference, is coming up 5 to 7 March. It's called Be The Voice. How cool is that theme? You know, Red Joes for both the main conference and the kids' conference are now open, so make sure you check out our website and get in fast. It's going to be a great few days. You know, our first in college subject for the year, Authenticity and Authority of the Bible, is starting on the 11th of March. You know, all classes this year are live on Zoom, uh, so you can do it from the comfort of your own home, uh, which is really great for those with families and, and busy schedules. Um, so you can sign up for that again online, so get in fast if that's something you're interested in as well. You know, we also uh, launched Imam's in play mums and bubs, so I got my words sort of mixed up. Uh, this last Thursday, it was a great morning reaching out to the mums of our community, and that's now on weekly uh, on Thursdays at 10 30 a.m. So, I uh, you do re are required to register online for that. Um, so, if you're interested or know someone who might be interested in coming along to that, uh, you can fill out the link in the comments below if you'd like. And of course, I'm wise back on this week. It's going to be a an epic, um, epic evening of fun for grade 7 to 12, 7 to 9 p.m. Uh, at Burnside Community Centre. 
So right now it's that time of the service where we're going to continue our worship by giving. You can give at inchurchmelbourne.com.au forward slash giving and there's different options there. The link's in the comments below. Uh, and yeah, we just thank you for your generosity and continuing to put God first in your life. I know for me, giving is such an important part of my, my week uh, because it's just me redefining that even in my finances, I'm putting God first in every area of my life. great day to be here on our church vision sunday and i just want to share with you some of the many things that we have planned for this year it's a good year to be at in church melbourne from march we're going to be starting our next steps program what is your next step what is your next step we're going to be starting our faith essentials course which is just the basics of what it means to be a christian something we should all do we also are going to be starting our discipleship essentials course how to walk with Jesus, how to live like he wants us to live. 
And of course, we also have in college running throughout the year. There's some amazing subjects that are going to be run by Pastor Ashok and Mary this year. And the first course will commence on the 11th of March. And that subject is the authenticity and authority of the Bible. Lots of resources there to grow in our faith. One thing that I always get excited about is Encounter Weekends. Encounter Weekends is where we find freedom. We go away for two nights, we hang out with our, our friends and we just press into God. We have great teaching. So look out for those dates when they become available. We'll be having a men's encounter, a women's encounter and a youth encounter. You don't want to miss out this year on encounters. Conferences. We've got two great conferences this year that you've already heard some about, but, but put them aside in your diary. We'll be having our missions conference very soon. You don't want to miss that. And of course, Holy Spirit conference, which we are calling His Presence. And you don't want to miss out on that one as well. We're going to really press in and learn more about His presence in our lives through the Holy Spirit. Of course, our church is all about the community and we have planned Subject to COVID, of course, we get have to get a little creative, um, some major outreach events. We have something planned for Easter. Just stay tuned for more details. And depending on restrictions, we're going to do a major event in spring as well, a family fun day, hopefully. And then, of course, our carols will happen regardless, whether we're live this year or we do like last year and are online. What a great thing to be a part of is our outreaches. This is how we get the gospel to everyone everywhere, starting right here at home. Another opportunity will come is our estate outreaches. This is where we encourage a connect group to reach their community, reach their local, literally where they live and reach the community that way. So look out for more details for that as well. The last thing I just want to mention is the land and building fund. You know, our vision as a church is to purchase land and a building for our own. We've been grateful for this building and others that we've rented, but we really want a home to call our own. Up until now, to this point, I'm really excited to announce we have raised $74,066.90 into the land and building fund. This is a miracle, nothing short of a miracle and absolutely fantastic. But it is just a start. We actually need a whole lot more money to, to get that building. So I just encourage you to seek the Lord and, and keep giving into that land and building fund as you are able. And as of this week, we've started a new account specifically for that purpose. And you'll see the details of that account on the screen. Well, church, what a great year to be in church. And I hope you're excited as uh, Pastor Craig and myself are for all these things coming up right now why don't you continue to worship with us as we we go to a video Thanks so much to Rachel, who has hosted our service this morning. Of course, uh, with this broadcast going to air and the restrictions that have come in uh, f uh, for Victoria uh, this weekend, uh, Rachel has had to uh, leave early and she's uh, uh, to accept a role in Wollongong, New South Wales. 
And so, Rach, I just want to publicly thank you so much for all you've done to help your mum and I. But the way you've just served God uh, the last six years at In Church Melbourne, we're not sure whether uh, this role for Rachel is going to be permanent uh, full time. It's for initially for three months. But sweetheart, we just wish you all the best. Well, church family, it is so good to see you online. Of course, uh, I was hoping to see many of you uh, in person today, but we pivot and we adapt and we learn to just roll with change. And so uh, coronavirus can't stop the vision of the church. And this morning, I'm so pleased to share with you our 2021 vision. I wonder if you'd just stretch out your faith uh, as we uh, come around the word, pray for me as, and I'll, I'll, I'll pray right now. Father, we just thank you and we praise you that your word brings us life. Your word brings us healing. Lord, your word directs us and guides us. Your word enables us to be part of what you're doing on the earth. And Father, we pray today that your word would fall on good soil. And that, Lord, you would fill us with your vision, uh, Lord, for our church family, particularly here in Melbourne. Lord, I thank you and I praise you, uh, Father, for your goodness to us. And I pray, Father, that, Lord, you would stretch out your hand and you'd go before us in every way. And we pray in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Well, 2020, the year of closed. And well, I guess this Sunday, 2021, you know, things are closed as well. Of course, our deep prayer and our hope is that this is just a five day lockdown, that this coronavirus uh, outbreak uh, will be under control and that our Premier will be announcing things opening up uh, from, uh, from Thursday. You know, we have just experienced closed borders, closed beaches, closed businesses. We've seen churches closed, parks and recreation uh, equipment closed, restaurants closed, cinemas closed, workplaces closed, schools and universities closed, and even uh, guests to our homes like this Sunday closed to being able to do that. Well, it might seem strange, particularly on a Sunday when we couldn't meet for church because everything's been closed. But I sense with all my heart that God is calling 2021 the year of open. I am open to everything that God wants to do in my life. We are open as a church family to everything that God desires to do in and through us. You know, John, uh, the Apostle John, had a vision uh, of the future on the island of Patmos when he was very old. And on that island, he wrote the book of Revelation. And in Revelation chapter 3, verses 7 and 8, he wrote these words. The angel of the church to, in Philadelphia write, These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. He opens what no one can shut, and he shuts what no one can open. Verse 8. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and not denied my name. I have placed before you, says the Lord, an open door that no one can shut. This is the good news of the gospel, that not even the devil himself can stop what God wants to do in and through our lives. God has placed before us an open door. You know, this year, we will speak much more about this, but I believe that this is a year for us to open our hearts. 
I brought a message a couple of weeks ago called Open Heart. There is so much more that we're going to teach and preach about this. You know, this is a year to open our Bible, perhaps like we never, ever have. This is a year to press in to the Word of God and place our confidence in the Word of God. This is a year to open our hands, to serve like we've perhaps never served before. This is a year to open our resources. This is a year to open our eyes and see people the way God sees them. This is a year to open our mouths and confess our faith and to share the good news that is the gospel. Our theme this year in 2021 is open. Secondly, today, I want to share with you an even greater vision, which is actually beyond 2021. You know, last week, Pastor Melissa and I spent time with our spiritual parents, Pastor Jack and Pastor Carol Haynes. We uh, had um, uh, hours together at their home in Sydney and they shared something with us that we have just not been able to ignore or lay down. In fact, Pastor Jack uh, said to us, you don't have to do this. Uh, this is something that we feel we're called to. Uh, of course, if you want to, that's that's up to you. But but there was no obligation. There was no sense of, uh, uh, you know, Pastor Jack saying, you know, Melbourne needs to do this. Craig and Melissa, you need to do this. You know, today in Sydney, it, it's the 25th anniversary of Pastor Jack and Carol becoming the pastors of what is now called In Church Sydney. And they shared with us that they have spent 9,132 days pastoring the people of that congregation. They shared with us a dream. They shared with us a vision that they have for the next 1,000 days. In the next 1,000 days, they said to us, we want to see 1,000 souls added to the kingdom of God. In the next 1,000 days, we want to see turn to Christ 1,000 people who don't know Jesus today, but who will be totally committed followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. A 1,000 days, a 1,000 souls. A 1,000 days, a 1,000 lives. A 1,000 days... A thousand names, 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 not just numbers, names, people, 1,000 names recorded, recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life, recorded on our roles as we pastor and lead and care for them. You know, Melissa and I have been thinking about the fact that we now have been in Caroline Springs 2,362 days. God has been speaking to our hearts in preparation for today's service, and we have felt deep within our spirit, hey, what happens if we here in Melbourne could believe for 1,000 people coming to Christ in the next 1,000 days? What could that look like? here for us in Melbourne. You know, to be honest, Sydney is a church of more than a thousand. We are a church, you know, there'd be 100 to 200 people that call in church Melbourne home. You know, we have many more than 100 people attend our live service and many more online. But if we just imagine for a moment, only 100 people attended in Church Melbourne, if 100 people led 1,000 people to faith in Christ in the next 1,000 days, what could that look like? 100 people intentionally sharing their faith to see 1,000 people know Jesus in the next three years. You know, for each person, 
That would be believing for one person to come to faith every 100 days. One person finding Christ every three months or so for the next three years. Me reaching 3.3 people for Christ in one year. And 99 of our brothers and sisters in Christ who make in church Melbourne home doing the same. Is that possible? You know, I believe it is. We want to see 1,000 people begin the journey of knowing Jesus, finding freedom, discovering their purpose and making a difference. Let's offer hope. Let's offer the good news of Jesus Christ and eternal life to a thousand people in the next thousand days. And you know what? This vision is not conditional on to lockdown or being restricted by restrictions. We can fulfill this vision in church, online or in our homes. What if this became the main thing? that everything else that we're involved with as a church was peripheral to it? What if we woke up every day not thinking about COVID-19 or UK strains, but thinking about 1,000 names written in the Lamb's Book of Life? You know, I know this morning Ken is watching. And Ken, I want to say to you, you're number one. Family, you know, this last week, I was able to pray with with Ken a prayer of commitment, the sinner's prayer. Ken gave his life to Christ this week. I'm already seeing it. I just be, have been inspired by it. I've already been seeing it. So there's a few things I want to ask you as we set up ourselves for the next thousand days. Firstly, I'm going to ask you to own this vision for yourself. If you are part of In Church Melbourne, if In Church Melbourne is your spiritual home, would you own this vision? How many of these 1,000 names belong to you? Will you pray about that? Will you ask God, how many names will come through you in the next 1,000 days? How many of these names will come through our kids' church and our children's ministries? How many will come through our youth ministry, Laura and the team? How many will come through our young adults, through our young families, through our senior members of the church, through our connect groups? How many, Pastor Carly, will come through in community care services? How many will come through our online service or our live service? Will you own this vision with me? Will you embrace it and will you make it your own? Secondly, I'm going to ask you to owe this vision. Not only own it, but to owe it. What do I mean by that? The Apostle Paul, when he was writing to the church at Rome, said this in Romans 1, 14 and 15. I am a debtor both to Greeks and to barbarians, to both wise and to unwise. So as much as it is in me, I am all ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. Debtor. Debtor. You know, the Greek word for debtor, Strong's Concordance puts it this way. One who owes another. One who owes a debt. One held by some obligation. Bound by some duty. Would you not only own this vision with me, but would you owe it? Would you become a debtor with me to a thousand people? I owe this gospel message to 1,000 people in the next 1,000 days who do not today know Jesus 
as their Lord and Saviour, and therefore their names are not written in God's book of life. David Platt said this, Every saved person this side of heaven owes the gospel to every lost person this side of hell. May we have a sense of the duty and obligation that is on our church as we dream of a thousand people becoming committed followers of Jesus in the next 1,000 days. I ask you to own this vision. I ask you to owe this vision. And thirdly, I ask you to buy this vision. Will you, like me, be willing to pay the price and count the cost to own this vision? Luke 14, 28, Jesus is speaking and he says this, but don't begin until you count the cost. I'll say it again. But don't begin until you count the cost. For who would begin construction of a building or a vision or a dream without first calculating the cost to see if there is enough money to finish it? Buy this vision with me. What's it going to cost you in time? in commitment, in courage, in boldness, in taking up your cross and following Christ. Jesus said in Matthew 13 verses 45 and 46, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all he had and bought it. You know, to me, a thousand souls in a thousand days is a pearl of great price. A pearl more valuable than anything and everything I own. Family, I'm asking you this vision Sunday morning, I'm asking you to own this vision, to owe this vision to buy this vision, and finally, I'm asking you to sell this vision. To own this vision, you must be courageous. But to sell this vision, you must be contagious. There are people all around you who are listless and lifeless, living without a focus and without a vision. Many people have emerged from 2020 in a mist and a fog of uncertainty and lack of clarity. There are those around you with no reason, no cause, no purpose, no hope and no vision. You know, Proverbs 29 verse 18 says this, where there is no vision, the people will perish. You know, the New Living, uh, sorry, the, the NIV version of this uh, Proverbs 29, 20, 29, 18 says this, where there is no vision, they cast off restraint. The message puts this proverb this way. If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. Do you want to be in that most blessed place? Well, attend to what God reveals. What is God revealing to us this missions, sorry, this vision Sunday? He's revealing this. Sell the vision to those around you. You know, seeing others saved saves me. Have you ever been around a brand new Christian? You know, I've been around a brand new Christian this week. It is beautiful and it is wonderful to see someone find faith in Christ, to have the light go on, to see their soul come alive to the things of God. And you know what? It saves me from a shallow, superficial and self-focused life and indeed I say it, Christianity. I'm asking 
for you to buy this vision with me. In other words, I'm asking for you to be contagious, transmit its life-giving power to someone else. I pray that 1,000 lives in 1,000 days would be transmittable, spreadable, infectious, communicable. Come on, let's do this. Let's own this vision. Let's lay hold of this all in, full on, amped up, no fear. The Holy Spirit, he will help us. Why? Because it's God's desire that none should perish, that all come to eternal life. How great is the next three years going to be when we continue to keep the focus? Who am I believing for in the next three months who's going to get saved? And then when we see that person say, well, in the next three months, who am I going to believe is going to be saved? You know, God wants to do a great thing in and through your life. I can't wait for that day when I'm walking on the streets of heaven and people come up to me and say, Craig, thanks so much for sharing the gospel with me. Hey, Craig, thanks so much for introducing me to our Saviour Jesus. I long for that day. You know, we have all of eternity, said Robert Moffat, to uh, enjoy and celebrate our victories, but we only have one short hour to win them. In this short hour, in this short life we're given, let's plunder hell and populate heaven, as Reinhard Bonnke would say. On this Vision Sunday, I pray that you're inspired. I pray that God would speak into your heart. Welcome to 2021. Welcome to the next thousand days as we seek God together. We thank him for his open door this year that we are declaring open. And we thank him for the vision of seeing 1,000 people one to Christ in the next 1,000 days. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you and I praise you that you are the author of eternal life. Lord, we can't buy our salvation. We can't work for our salvation. Lord, the only way we are saved is through faith, gift of God, not by works, so no one can boast. We thank you, Jesus, that through the cross, you have opened grace and mercy and forgiveness to any who would call you Lord and Saviour. We thank you that the gospel really is good news. It's good news that you love us. It's good news that you were born for us, that you lived for us, that you died for us, Jesus, and that you rose again for us. It's good news that you sent your Holy Spirit to equip us and lead us and guide us and empower us. I pray, Father, over your people today that you would inspire them with vision. And even when our government and anyone else in our community is saying closed, closed, not open, I pray that we would have a real sense of open, that you're the God who opens doors that no one can close. I pray, Lord, that as we explore this this year, that, Lord, you would stir our faith to trust you even more. And, Father, I pray that even today you would begin to lay people, names on our hearts. Who are the people that we're going to seek to reach with the gospel? Who are the people that from today we're going to begin to pray for? And, Lord, pray for opportunities, God moments, divine appointments, where we could share our testimony, share our faith with those who do not know you yet. I thank you, Father, and I praise you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Well, friends, I can't end a message like this today with just assuming that everyone who is watching us online is already in relationship with Jesus. I know that many of you have been tuning in online and uh, you're seeking God, but you've not yet found him. You know, Jesus says to you who might be in that position today 
that he'll never turn away anyone who comes to him. You know, it's the devil who throws our sins up in our face and says, God could never accept you. But it's Jesus who extends his blood-soaked hands, who says, my grace is sufficient for you. You know, God proved his love towards you. He proved that he was for you and not against you by sending his son, Jesus, to pay the penalty for sin. Yes, your sin separates you from God. My sin used to separate me from God. But, you know, when I put my faith in Jesus and I asked him to forgive me and set me free, he did just that. And to anyone, doesn't matter what you've done or what you haven't done, to anyone who would come to Jesus and say, Jesus, would you forgive me? Would you set me free from my sin? From this day forward, I choose to follow you. To anyone who would do that, the Lord says, come. Come into my kingdom. Well, today, is God knocking on the door of your heart? Is Jesus saying, would you let me in? You know, he's always, he always knocks. He's always a gentleman. He never forces his way in. But to all who would receive him, who would believe in his name, he gives the right to become a child of God. I wonder this morning, would you receive Jesus? If you would, why don't you pray today in wherever you're watching out loud this prayer of commitment as I pray it on the screen. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you love me, that you have a good plan and purpose for my life. But I confess today that I have sinned that I've been separate from you. I've lived my life the way I wanted to live it. And I've not followed what you've told us to do. Lord, I'm asking that you would forgive me for all the things that I've done wrong by you. I'm asking that you would set me free from my sin. I make the decision today to turn away, to repent from the things I used to do. And Jesus, I declare that I want to follow you. I want you, Lord, to be, be my Lord and my Saviour. From this moment forward, I choose you. And I thank you that you choose me. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, if you have prayed that prayer, we're obviously not in church. I'm not able to see a raise of hands and have our welcome team support and all of those things. So would you do me a favour? Would you go to the link below? It's inchurchmelbourne.com.au forward slash connect. Would you complete an online connect card? And would you let me know that you've made that decision to accept Christ as your Lord and Saviour or... If this happens to be the case for you, you've recommitted your life to Jesus today. When you complete that, one of our team will be in contact in the next week. We just want to encourage you, you know, consider with you, is there anything else that we could do for you? But if you've done that this morning, then I would like to say on God's behalf, welcome into the family of God. Welcome into the kingdom of heaven and if you're choosing to make In Church Melbourne your spiritual home, well, welcome into our family. Well, family, God bless. It's been great to share with you. Let's pray that this current uh, coronavirus restrictions lift and uh, we give God all praise and all glory. Hey, God bless you today. We'll see you soon. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. What a fantastic service it has been. I hope you have a blessed week. And don't forget, registrations are open uh, for our live service again next Sunday. So if you want to come in person, we'll be there and you can register via our website. Uh, otherwise, we'll see you back here online. Have a great week.